Hi, it's Mark again, back to show you a little bit more about Eigen Day. This time what we're going to do is build a modular synthesizer. And again, I'm going to do it with my uh, sound plane. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it right from the very basics all the way up. The only thing I've actually done is I've created a black setup and I've, the only thing I've put on it is the audio agent. Um, and the reason I've done that is because you need to specify the audio um, interface and it'll start clicking if I start switching it on the video. Okay, anyway, let's get started because we've got a lot to get through. Um, so first thing I'm going to need to do is I need to control my, I need some kind of input device. Um, you could use a MIDI device if you were using this, but I need my T3D device, which is for the sound play. Okay. And just configure that up quickly. Um, I'm actually going to say it's made of 27 columns, not 30, because later I'm going to use it um, in a slightly different mode. Um, so what we're going to do here, just expand that. The reason I'm using 27 is I'm going to actually use uh, three columns here to be used for slider controls. Okay, so now we've got a device. The first thing you usually have to do is then convert that into a frequency that we're going to use with an oscillator. And the way we do that is we use a so-called scalar object. And that basically knows all sorts of things about musical scales, etc., and can convert the keyboard layout into scales. Um, I'm not going to go into that too much now, um, just to say it gives us a frequency. So we just drag the inputs from the device into the scalar. Um, the next thing we need is obviously an oscillator. Uh, now, what kind of synthesizers would we be building if we don't use a sawtooth oscillator? So we'll find one of those. Yeah, there's a sawtooth oscillator. There are lots of different oscillators in, available, uh, but we'll just do the classics. Okay, so now what we need, obviously, for a sawtooth oscillator is we now need to have some way of getting frequency. Oh, we've got one. It's called the scalar. Uh, if they want to control the input, uh, usually you would use an AGSR, which uh, IGD has. But actually, to keep it simple, but also because I want it to be an expressive instrument, I'm actually going to use the pressure um, on a continuous surface. And so we just take the pressure output from here, which is connected to the volume input. That's all very good. That's control for the moment. Let's move things out of the way because it gets busy quite quickly. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to amplify the signal. And we're going to do that with a so-called gain control. And this will allow us to control the volume a little bit. Uh, gain control by default is uh, monophonic, but we can go in here and say we want two channels. And voila, we get two channels. Um, I can do is very friendly. When you wire up things, it will often find the defaults uh, inputs and outputs for you, which it does in this case. Sometimes it won't, so sometimes you'll see me expanding and connecting explicitly. Okay, so now we've gone from that gain, you can actually see that the gain actually has two inputs. Uh, I can be quite happy to take those and create stereo from that pair. That's easy enough. So now if we've done everything right, press a key and we've got them to do something which is increase the volume of the gain. <laughs> so we could actually do that by here by just increase the volume. I've got sound. Right, okay. And it's sensitive as well. Uh, now what we could do, however, if I bring up ID very quickly, we could actually use stage. Now I'm not going to show very much a stage. Just to really say that any of these things that you see me adjusting uh, or adding controls to, you could also create a user interface and stage for them. And it's very simple. All you do, come over to here, just click on the add button, you can then select the agent you're interested in. So I'm going to say I want the volume input of the gain stage and then just drag it onto the panel. Um, then we can check, change it to volume, and create it to a uh, horizontal slider if we want, etc. And now if I put it back into locked mode, I can now... So I can... But you can do this with everything, so cutoffs, etc. So you can build up complex user interfaces if you wish. Uh, but I want to concentrate more on controlling from the keyboard itself, so I won't go into that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Good. Right, so that's all very nice.
We have something that's very expressive, but you'll notice it's a fault, and that is it's monophonic. <laughs> Unfortunately, or well, fortunately, we're not dealing with real hardware, so making it polyphonic is simple, unlike with hardware. All we do is the issue is the oscillator actually has many signals coming in from this device's scalar. That's not the issue. The issue is that here we then go from a single waveform into the amplifier. So what we actually need to do is we need to combine those uh, multiple waveforms. And we do that using a so-called summer, because it sums the waveforms. And if we click on that, very easy. So all we do now, we can drag this over here. We just put it in the middle. Um, I, think, I, think, I think it'll just drag. Yeah, it'll just drag, so because it just connects itself up nicely. That's quite cool. And now, magically, we've got a polyphonic synthesizer. Very nice. Not very expressive, though. Um, the, the one thing I'll show you very quickly, um, at the moment, this is set up actually to just put a little bit of pitch, but it hasn't got any pitch bend on it. So let's get some pitch bend going on here. And we do that actually inside the um, scalar. And what we do here is we can adjust the amount of pitch bend that we want in the key bend range. Now, it's actually got one at the moment. Uh, so there was actually a bit of, oh no, there wasn't. I'm going to actually change it to 27 because what I want to do is I want to actually be able to slide across the keyboard. So, and then you remember I had 27 columns. Now, the second thing we need to do here is I can do works everything off signals and it allows you full control over what's going to do the pitch bend. So what we actually want to use is this horizontal movement is the so-called roll axis. So we combine from roll into pitch bend, key, key pitch bend input. Bing. And now we've got a lot of things because we're doing it over one key. And that's because the sound plane agent is set up in so-called, uh, it's in key mode, so it's like an eigenharp on one key. If I wanted to actually use the whole range of the keyboard, I simply switch on whole roll. And now we've got the whole roll. Um, okay, so I'm not doing any more of that for the moment. The other thing we can actually do, which will, so that's how you do it with the MIDI controller. Actually, the sound plane's a little different um, because inside the sound plane software, you can actually specify note zones and things like that. I can actually have a, my own layout here. And that's done here. So now these are actually got uh, specific intervals and things. And what I can actually do is rather than use ID to do it, I could be flexible enough to say, well, I won't use the scalar at all. What I'll do is I'll actually take the frequency directly from the sound plane. Uh, so we could do that. Um, and now, now we've got the frequency coming from the sound plane instead. Nice and easy. So how are we doing time? Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, the last thing is obviously a synthesizer. It won't be a synthesizer without any filters. So what we need to do is we need to add a filter. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, let's, let's be classic. We'll use a ladder filter. And then what we can do here is we can take the output of... So we've got the audio output coming here. We can take that from here. Rather than do that, we'll take the ladder filter here. Take the input to the output and then the low pass output into the input. And now if we actually edit the ladder filter, it'll actually say, it's not very good control. <laughs> Let's do something a little bit. So we've obviously got uh, the ladder filters actually doing something. So we can go from that. What we would like to do is obviously to be a bit more expressive than that. So what I'm actually going to do is to connect the um, front back movement into controlling the cut frequency. Now what we can actually do there is um, we've got the cut off frequency which is the main input of the ladder filter but we can also just so-called bend it away from that so go, apply an offset and 
If we do that, all we actually need to do is to take the your output here into the bend input and then automatically so, so we've actually got now what we can we can actually see this better if I switch this actually into um, I don't know. So we can actually hear it there. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day on that one. Uh, this is only the first, but uh, the next video, what I'm going to show is how to use multiple oscillators. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to make sound a lot better by using a, a reverb agent, which makes things very nice. Okay, so that's for now.